Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar on best practices for managing certificate programs. And uh, we're happy to have Kathy Brady with um, AugieSoft here as our main presenter today. And my name is Chris Murphy, and I'm also with AugieSoft. And for those of you who may be new to AugieSoft, um, we develop a software product called Lumens, which is an enrollment management system designed for the continuing education market. But before I get going on the webinar today, I just wanted to run through a couple of general guidelines. Um, first off, we will um, ask a couple of polling questions um, throughout the course of Kathy's presentation today. And uh, you'll see those questions uh, appear on your screen, and then you'll have about a minute to respond, and then we'll read off the answers and then, then move on with the presentation. Um, we are um, recording the webinar today, as we do with all of the AugieSoft um, best practice webinars, and then we will post um, a recording um, along with a copy of the slides to our website, and um, it will be um, posted probably within the next 24 hours. And I also just wanted to let everybody know we did launch um, a new website yesterday, too. So if you do have any difficulties, it may be due to the website um, transition that we're going through, but um, hopefully you'll be able to find everything just fine. Um, and then finally, um, we will um, provide some time at the end for questions. And so if you've got a question for Kathy, if you could just send that in through the toolbox, question box on the toolbar, and um, we'll get to as many questions at the end as we can. And so with that, I think we're ready to go. So Kathy, um, welcome. Thank you. So I will um, introduce myself. My name is Kathy Brady, and I'm speaking to you from Rhode Island. I uh, work for Augusoft as a product advisor and an account manager. However, I have a very long history with the company because I was on the development team back in 1999 for the original software. At that point, it was called uh, Lifelong Learning, Lifelong Learning uh, System, and it's now Lumens. But um, we uh, were able to um, come to market with the first web-hosted system back before uh, uh, software as a service or anything like that was uh, even uh, introduced into the general marketplace. So. Um, I'm happy to be here with you today. Um, and we're going to talk about certificate programs, managing certificate programs, a little bit about Gen Y and certificate programs, and also about technology support that um, can help you with the management of your certificate program. So um, let's jump right in and find out why, why should you offer certificates. And certificates is a fairly new uh, market. Uh, segment for many in continuing education. We have offered professional development programs, we have offered community education programs, we have offered workforce training programs, but today we're seeing lots of people who want certificate programs. And it may be people who have um, bachelor's degrees who want to uh, get additional information about uh, something in their uh, field of expertise, that they, they need this credentials behind them to help move them forward. Um, they just may want to know some additional information and be able to take a grouping of classes. <clears throat> but Gen Y loves certificate programs. Um, they do not need to, they don't feel the need necessarily to have them be credit programs or be counted towards any degrees, but it's really kind of a grouping of classes that is able to provide them with credentials to move them forward in either their personal or professional life. So uh, certificates, they're in high demand. We see them being developed um, in every aspect of um, continuing education, whether it's in a technical school, whether it is in a community college or whether it's in a university. So very high demand of, within university sectors. We're seeing actually departments that are creating certificate programs. So it might be the business school is developing an event management uh, certificate program and marketing it that way. <clears throat> um, they have high profit margins. Um, certificate programs, have to 
to go through the same um, approval process that you would have to go through to um, have it added to your curriculum. However, you're using many times adjunct faculty. Um, they are online uh, certificate programs, so you can you're crossing your geographic borders and you're you're getting students from all over the place. Um, so you can take a lot of students in these certificate programs. So they have fairly high profit margins, which we look for in continuing education. They also have high retention rates, which means once that student starts in, they are going to come back to complete. So you see a high repeat rate. You see um, students who take more than one certificate program, so they might take a program in technology, and then they may move into, uh, so they may take like a Microsoft Office program, certificate program, then they may move actually into something with social media, net, uh, media certificate program, maybe networking certificate program. Um, <clears throat> so they have a high retention rate, and you will see your students really come back. Um, and they also capture um, your niche. You can create niche markets for your university, for your college, um, so, and you get to be known for these certificate programs. So um, we're, I've worked with uh, George Washington University, and they have a certificate. I've worked with their certificate program on event planning and event management. That is a niche for them, that market. So people come from all over the country to Washington, D.C., or they attend those programs online um, because they are known for that event management program. So uh, this, these are the reasons why your institution should embrace the, the programming of certificates. So we've got one poll question. So Chris is going to put that up on the screen. It's a simple one. Yes, thanks, Kathy. So you should now see the question up on your screen. Do you currently offer certificate programs? And uh, just have a couple of answers for you to choose from. Um, so you can just take a little time to respond, and then we'll read off the results and continue on with uh, Kathy's presentation. All right, if you haven't had a chance to respond, we'll just give you another couple of seconds here, and then we'll move on. All right, it looks like everybody, for the most part, has had a chance to uh, respond. So let's see what the results are. And it uh, looks like the vast majority, 85%, are offering certificate programs at this time. 12% uh, of you said that you are not, um, and then 3% said that you do not currently, but you will be soon. So. Looks like a pretty good number are using certificates already. Great, thank you. So a uh, part of this presentation was to talk about Gen Y, since they are the target market for certificate programs. And so just um, some unique characteristics about Gen Y, which are people who are born between 1979 and 1995. Uh, and so they have um, they have grown up with technology. They uh, they are used to collaboration, uh, and so this is some of the things that they are looking for at, within a certificate uh, program. So high quality evaluation. They want effective instructional technology. They have grown up with computers. So online learning is not something that is foreign to them. They want different types of support. So they can come to you. You've got to really kind of think about the support system that you can provide to them. They want feedback. They want it uh, frequent. And they want it to be effective. Um, and they really believe in shared practices. So taking these, the kind of characteristics of this Gen Y and now creating the certificate for them. So let's just talk about some of those things. So some of the best practices for 
the creation of this certificate. It needs to be interactive and collaborative. So they don't want to be just spoken to. They don't want to just go out and um, get homework assignments. They want to collaborate. They want to have peer-to-peer -peer learning. They want to uh, be able to kind of come together, make presentations to the other people in their classes. Um, so it's a real sharing. It's a real part of the community. Um, they like structured activities and learning experiences. Experiences. Uh, Gen Y is used to um, being in soccer, you know, being shuttled to soccer games and having all kinds. They didn't do kind of free play on the playground all that much. They really were grown grown up in classes, in activities. So this means that um, this is how they want their learning as well. So they want some structured activity around um, those those learning experiences. They want it now. They Just-in-time learning means I want to sign up for that certificate program and I want it to begin. I want to be able to start it immediately. So these are kind of those open-ended programs, those online programs that are available to start as soon as you sign up. Um, and online learning, as I said, they grew up with technology. So um, it may be a hybrid program that you're putting together where you have face-to-face -face and online, but the online is very important to them. And it's not about learning in their pajamas or any of that kind of thing. Um, it's not that kind of cliche, uh, you know. It's just because they are comfortable with technology and they expect technology to be part of their learning experience. And then Gen Ys, uh, you know, they move around, they're pretty mobile, and so therefore uh, the, the certificate has to be flexible. And so you have to have some flexibility within your creation. Now, all of this is, is kind of hard to uh, put together uh, when you're bound by some institutional guidelines as well. So uh, we understand you're going to be working with your Office of Academic Affairs and you're going to be working on curriculum and method of instruction and the, the assessments that go into all of uh, your, your creation of this certificate. Um, then you, you've got it put together and uh, you've got to go through the approval process. So all of this you know, keeping all of this in mind, you know, you're going to go through a proposal and go live with it. You've got, got it live, and then now what do I do with it? Because my ERP might not support it. Um, you know, I'm managing things on spreadsheets. I really don't know how to communicate um, that I actually have this. Um, program. So let's uh, look at best practices for communication. Well, you know, we can put uh, certificates in a printed catalog, and that's, that's great if you use a printed catalog, but if we're going after the Gen Y uh, student, then we've got to look at other alternative methods for communication. So um, we want to be blogging, and we want to blog about it on maybe our institution's blog, but we also want mentions on other blogs. So there may be technology blogs, or there may be career blogs, or leadership blogs, things like that. You want to blog about it. Um, you want to be driving them to websites so they can get information. So you definitely want your um, certificate programs listed on your websites, and you want it on your continuing ed pages, and you want it on your registration pages, social media, so your Facebook pages. You may start a Facebook group around this certificate program. I know that we did that at GWU. Um, we created a Facebook group, and it's very active, and so um, people come there to try to get our um, students uh, in internships, we let them know about internships. So using LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, um, those kinds of things to communicate about your certificate programs 
but also to communicate some of the benefits and you know let them know that there's internships available and things like that. Or just keeping building community and keeping that communication flow going. Uh, Gen Ys like strong images. They want to see it in pictures. So when you're communicating to um, this particular group about your program offerings, don't do it all in words. Really, a picture tells a thousand words, you know, tells a story for them. Um, so um, use those strong images. And then make sure your um, web pages or your QR codes that you might use um, in your advertising, on your postcards, uh, in uh, whatever types of advertising drive people to mobile optimized info pages because um, Gen Ys use their phones or they use their tablets. Um, they're very, you know, the desktop is almost um, non-existent anymore and the laptop is, is shortly behind it. So anytime you're driving people to these pages about uh, your certificate programs, make sure they're mobile optimized and make sure there are info pages that will drive them into registration. So earlier I said, you know, you've done the work, you've got the certificate approved, you, you know, it's all up and running and you're, you know, you're ready to launch it, you've communicated it, um, but your registration portal doesn't support certificates. It may support degree, um, bearing programs, it may support credit bearing programs, but for non-credit, um, <clears throat> it's sometimes a little bit iffy. And then being able to then track your, uh, your participants and their grades and their attendance and all those things, you need a solution for that. Well, since we're, we're here at Autosoft and we're talking about uh, technology, um, we do have some technology support to actually help you manage those certificate programs. So first one, Lumens Executive, it's designed to support certificate programs that are using a related cluster of non-credit classes that constitutes a coherent body of study within a dis discipline or a set of related disciplines. So, it's taking some light classes, maybe it's Microsoft Office, a certificate program in Microsoft Office. I want to be an Office specialist. So it's pulled together Excel, Word, PowerPoint, and Outlook. And then if you really want to know the Office product, you're going to get uh, PowerPoint and Access as well. Um, so it's pulled those programs together. You've assigned attributes to them that there's a certain attendance rate that they must that they must have. They must have certain grades. They must take them in a certain order. They can pay for them at different times. So being able to, and this is what we might call a part-time certificate program. This is something that someone is going to take after work. They're going to take it not as, you know, a full-time um, Co uh, cohort group, they're just really kind of taking a class at a time, but they want to cobble that together to become a certificate program. So Lumen's executive is going to track the student from the time they self-register for that class until the time they finish. And if they only get halfway through the program, it's going to allow it's going to allow you to run a report to see where are my people how you know what do they need to do to complete what else can I help them with how can I market to them further to get them back on track and get them back in and then by uh, tracking grades by tracking attendance by tracking their CEUs you're going to be able to then you know once they've finished with that program, hand them 
a certificate uh, for the program, which assures the mastery that they are looking for because you have said that there's attendance records, that there are grade records. Now, you can, you can also create that certificate program that doesn't that doesn't have that criteria, and that's okay too. So within Women's Executive, there's lots of flexibility in that creation. It gives you the ability to create the pro the product that you're going to be able to go out and sell. So that's the that's one option for you in technology support. An add-on to that is a brand new product that's coming out right now, which um, is built upon what we what we were using called Lumen's Workforce, and we've taken Lumen's Workforce and re-engineered it. And what what we've done is used the certificate functionality, the flexible certificate functionality, and brought it one step further. And this is so that you're able to create certificate programs that are designed for cohort groups of students. So this is perfect for the technology student, for healthcare, maybe CN, uh, the certified nurse assistance programs, career professional programs. So anything, you know, that there may even be a license at the end, you know, so they're going to sit for a license exam. Those full-time programs that just are a little bit more serious, that are a little bit more like degree programs, but really they don't need the, a degree, but they have kind of this group and they're taking this co cohort group are taking the program together. They're going through the program together. Um, so this uh, full-time certificate module um, has program management in it. And so it allows you to create this program and have program management. There's prerequisite tracking in it. So there are tasks that you might have to achieve. Uh, there may be admissions tasks. Um, there could be course in, or uh, prerequisites. So all that prerequisites um, that you need to take this course before you can take that course is um, included in the full-time certificate module. And then the final thing, which is really exciting, is financial aid and funding source management. So that if you have those, uh, if you're eligible for Pell Grants, or if you're eligible for um, some kind of financial aid, or if there's a funding source that is going to help the student pay for it, we're going to track that. And it all becomes part of the student record and it all ties very nicely and neatly into the accounts receivable functionality of uh, Lumens. So let me just kind of take a look at some of the things that are coming just via some screenshots. So here's a certificate prerequisites. And as I said, you can have a task prerequisite, you can have a question prerequisite, or you can have a course prerequisite. So uh, maybe the question is, you know, are you working in a related field? Uh, maybe the task is that they need to have career consultation before that they can, you know, finish the program. So it's not prerequisite, just pre-admission prerequisites, but it's things that they need to do throughout the, the, the length of the program and maybe this is something, this is a graduation requirement as well. So maybe they need to have a career consultant consultation before they can graduate. Um, so these kinds of things, you are able to create whatever the question is, and then there's a checkbox to make sure they go through. Um, and it, it doesn't show on here, but course prerequisites is um, also included. So they may have to have certain courses before they can be admitted to the program. There may be testing courses that are part of those prerequisites, or there may be prerequisites that they have to take uh, XL1 before they can take XL2. So all those things are going to be um, programmed directly into the Lumens website. 
just one other screenshot I'm going to show you. Uh, this talks about the course prerequisite. So you can see, uh, for those of you who are Lumen's uh, customers and have Lumen's executive, it, it looks very much like your present um, product where you have certificates, you manage courses, you manage course attributes, you build program sections, and that's where you would assign dates, times, uh, to the certain programs, but here is the course prerequisite, which is brand new. So it's a course name. It may be something that they've taken someplace else, or it may be part of your institution, and then you, you, you are going to actually record the completion, the passing score, and if it's a work keys test or not, um, we are in we are including the work keys uh, test in, inside of this full-time certificate program. So that is pretty exciting. We have heard a lot of people who have wanted um, prerequisites, and so we are building that. That is part of full-time certificates, and it will be part of the other certificate functionality as well. Financial aid. Um, there are programs out there that um, can accept financial aid for non-credit certificates. And so we hear that quite a bit. And so we have built, we have financial aid built into the workforce product, but it was kind of a standalone product and it didn't integrate, didn't play nicely with accounts receivable. And that was a problem. So now we have revamped the uh, financial aid part of this product, and um, so you can have uh, private or public funding sources, so you may have Pell Grants, you may have Sally May, you may have, um, you know, a hospital may be paying for uh, a student, so it could be an employer who's paying, whoever the funding source is, we're going to be able to associate the funding source with the student and then build those kind of accounts receivable uh, records. Uh, then you're going to link that accounts receivable and invoicing so that you'll be able to invoice that funding source for your um, money. Um, when you have, when we talk about Pell Grants, we know uh, and uh, Stafford loans, we know that there are certain times that that money is pulled down. So you're going to build your uh, program sections around when that in, when that money can be pulled down into your. Uh, program. Um, we also understand that there are criteria in order for students to receive that money. So it may be grades, um, it may be hours uh, of the program, so all of that is programmed um, within the Lumen's uh, full-time certificate product. Um, you can have multiple funding sources for one student, um, and if the, the the total of the program offering is more than the funding source, then the student becomes responsible for payment. And then there are multiple payment types. They may pay with a credit card. They may pay with a check. They may pay with a combination of the two. They may pay over time. So all of that is addressed uh, within the financial aid uh, management. So uh, we have another poll question, so I'm going to pass that to you, Chris. All right. Thanks, Kathy. Uh, so now everybody should see the, the last poll question on your screen, which is, can you accept financial aid for your certificate program offerings? And again, we have a couple of different answers for you to choose from. And so if you could just select the one that uh, fits your um, program best, and then we'll um, take a little time to read off the answers and then wrap up uh, with Kathy's presentation. Just wanted to remind people, if you do have any questions for Kathy, if you want to send those in through the, uh, the questions box on the toolbar, and we'll um, take some time at the end here to answer as many as we can get to. All right, so let's see what uh, the results show. So 
Um, 56% of you said that you are not able at this time to um, accept financial aid for some of your certificate programs. 28% um, um, said that you can in some instances, but not all, and 16% um, are able to accept um, financial aid with their certificate program. Thank you. Okay, so I've got just <clears throat> one more little slide to wrap things up. So why lumens for certificates? Um, well, it's designed for continuing and professional education. Uh, lumens handle, we know your business. We are not um, a credit of degree-bearing software system. We are really designed to handle the needs of non-credit programs or professional and continuing education programs. And um, we built our practice on that. And um, we bring in experts to help us with the design of the software, with any enhancements. Um, there are experts from the industry that help. Uh, so the development is not done with, within a bubble. Um, it's a, there's flexible for curriculum design. So you may have a certificate that's just one class, and that's fine with us. Um, it may be uh, just a for fun certificate that doesn't have any grades and or attendance, and you don't, there may be mandatory but in elective classes, and there may not be. So we give you lots of flexibility within the design. The superior tracking. So once a student registers for a certificate program, they are considered a certificate registration. And that puts a whole different tracking on that student. And it allows the student to go in and see where they are within the certificate. It prompts them to register for additional classes within the certificate. And then you're running reports off of those students to see kind of how profitable those certificate programs are and what you can do to enhance that student to take more classes. Uh, the reporting engine is designed so that you make data-driven decisions. So we are collecting a lot of data about the student. This is data that would not be typically collected in your ERP solution. So we have a lot of additional demographic information so that we can make some additional um, decisions about that student where we can kind of analyze what classes and what certificates they've taken so we can um, say what they should take next and you can market directly to that. So all of these things um, really kind of make us unique within enrollment management. And finally, we tie registration and payment together with options for loans, grants, scholarships, and third-party payments. So in many programs, I can register for that certificate program, but I don't pay for it right away. Um, and in this, Lumens really ties those two processes together. And that really does make us unique within enrollment for uh, continuing education because Enrollment or registration and payment happens in the same process. And so instead of having to uh, enroll and then go over to a business office and or wait for an invoice and pay, those things are tied together. So it makes you run more efficiently. It makes you much more profitable. So that's why I think that Lumens is a good choice for certificate programs. And um, I'm sure that there are some questions, so we're going to take those now. Chris, if there are any questions, I'll let you read them yeah. to me, and I'll do my best. We've got a few questions that have come in, and then just again, reminder, if you've got any questions, to just um, submit that in through the, the toolbar. Um, uh, one question is about financial aid and 
the funding feature and if that's available outside of the certificates feature in Lumens as well. Uh, right now it is part of the certificate functionality. And then um, for customers who are already currently Lumens exec customers, will um, they be automatically able to upgrade to full-time certificates or will that be an add-on feature? That uh, it, well, they can upgrade. Um, it, it is an add, full-time certificates is an add-on, um, and so we can certainly um, demonstrate that to them and send them some information on the cost associated with it because there's additional training and there's additional functionality and support needed for this. Um, and what types of reports um, will this uh, generate? So it uh, generates reports uh, uh, specifically for certificates, uh, uh, statistical analysis reports. So we'll tell you how many students, how much money, uh, average class size, um, cancellation rate. So certificate registration statistics. Uh, there are certificate roster reports. Uh, there are um, uh, certificate reports that tell you uh, your profitability for a certain certificate. So there's uh, profit reports. Um, and then there's also the ability to run reports to see how many people are in a certificate, what their completion rate was, um, you know, and what, who, who needs to take additional classes. So you can get actually individual reports on individual students to help, to help encourage them to continue down that path. All right. Um, that's all the questions that have come in right now. If you've got any last minute questions for Kathy, if you could please send those in and we'll get to those at the end here. Otherwise, I think we can wrap things up. So I'll just give it a little bit, little time here, but if there's no further questions, then I think we can probably sign off. Well, thank you so much for attending. If you do have any additional questions or you want um, a list of what those actual reports are, feel free to email me, Kathy, at augusoft.net. Um, if you want to have a, a demo, you can contact sales or you can certainly contact me directly. Um, I do work um, both in the sales team and with the um, development team, so I'm kind of between two departments. Um, and then any other questions, Chris can help you as well. Yes, so thanks again, Kathy, for the presentation. Um, a lot of good information there for everyone, hopefully. And if you do have any um, additional questions or want more information, um, again, we're more than happy to provide that. So you can follow up directly with Kathy or um, with the sales at Augusoft.net. And um, so with that, I think we're, we're ready to wrap things up. And if you do have a few seconds, if you could also just take a minute and fill out the, the post survey, um, the post webinar survey, that would be very helpful too. So um, that's where we get a lot of ideas for other types of webinars or topics that would be of interest to you. And so then hopefully we can put something together that will uh, meet your needs down the road. So with that, I think we're ready to sign off. So have a great day, everyone.